Hey guys, uh, I've been getting asked quite a lot recently about the Pro Tools dock so as I promised I would do a quick video of some of the features that I really like about it and some of the features that the dock has uh, Through time hopefully I'll do that alongside the S3 and show how they work in conjunction together but at the moment I'll focus just mostly on the Pro Tools dock itself I do apologise for the audio in this video but I've got a session running on Pro Tools right now so I am using the audio on the camera um, and the other thing to keep in mind when watching this video is this is a pre-release version of the Pro Tools dock that I have been very lucky to be using so please bear in mind that the one from stores shipping at the moment is just ever so slightly different and it just looks absolutely stunning so hopefully you can go and try one out and get hands on the one yourself Pro Tools Control gives me quick access to anything available on screen from a mixer view, tracks view Channel view, which is used for controlling anything from the plugins to input, dynamic, EQ, sends, pan, group, and the mix. Or I can go to the soft keys, and the soft keys are really, really cool for you know tapping. You can obviously scroll left and right using your iPad on there, but for some reason you might get lost. You can always hit home down in the bottom right hand side, and I think that's a really cool feature because of the amount of soft keys that we have available to us. And again, you can control these and change them about in the U control settings, but at any point you're using it and you think. I just want to go back to page one rather than scrolling all the way back all you have to do is just tap home on the right hand side and that makes navigating about it very very quick and I really really like that about it so going back to the mixer view here the hardware fader here feels absolutely fantastic it is just like the S3 and um, it's really sensitive I really really like it and I can't fa fault it at all in any way um, I've got this control in my kick track at the moment However, if I wanted it to control the snare track, which is the next one along, that's my snare top, all I have to do is just tap there. And there we go, that'll control the snare. At any point, I can just grab the screen and I can control any of the faders, but if I want to control them with the hardware, all I do is tap that track, and away I go, I control it from there. And I really like that about it, because with the faders feeling so good, it's really, really good for automation any point I want you to do automation, just for talking sake, I want to automate this kick track. Well that's fine, all I have to do is, if I want to go into right mode, I hold down right, while I've got this kick track selected, I hold down right, and I just hit my select, and there you go, you'll see it's actually gone into right mode. If I want to come back out of that, all I have to do is just hold down read, and just hit select, and there we go, we're back in read mode, and we've come out of right mode again. Um, you know, it's it's really fast, it feels great to use. At the top of the fader here, I have the option for my mute and solo for whatever track that this corresponds to at that time. Um, you also have your LEDs down here on the left hand side, and that's excellent as well. You know, they're nice and bright, they're not in your face, they're there. Uh, it does what it's supposed to do, and it does it really, really well. Um, over on the right hand side here, we have the bank and nudge controls, all the scroll controls, mark in, mark out and so on. So if I want to navigate about the mixer view, I don't have to do it with the Pro Tools control app swiping left and right. I can actually use the bank buttons. I can bank right up to 8 tracks in view, I can bank left, and I can do that for however many tracks are in the session. If I want to use nudge, then this is where shift layers come into play and to do that I've got two options to nudge I can hold down my shift and I can tap nudge once I will just nudge once left or right whatever way that I want to go I can release that and I can go back into banking however I might want to go completely into that layer for a while and to do that all I have to do is just hit shift once you'll see it's illuminated yellow that will be me in the shift layer and now I am nudging instead of taking the shift layer off and banking. Now the same thing can be done for anything on the shift layer for the automation modes and for any of you know all the other modes from nudging, marking, uh, scrolling. So for example the wheel on the Pro Tools dock feels absolutely lovely. It's really really nice. It's a massive step up, step up from the likes of the transport control which I was previously using and to, for example, scroll uh, horizontal or zoom horizontal I would hit zoom horizontal it lights up in green so that I know that I'm going to scroll my Pro Tools track horizontally obviously you can't see the screen but 
it does it and it does it very very well going into zoom vertical exactly the same thing I hit it and then I start to scroll using the jog wheel and it does it very very well if I want to go to scroll horizontal or scroll vertical rather than zoom again all I do is I tap shift I'm into that shift layer and I hit zoom horizontal on the shift layer it's actually scroll horizontal uh, so that's the mode that I'm in and to come out at that at any point I can just take the shift layer off and go back to whatever I feel like using at that time. So as I said the actual transport control itself is fantastic it feels great so do all of the buttons for navigating about the track as well play and stop all feel great they light up when you use them you have the option for you know return to the beginning of your session you have on the shift layer all your various things from record modes loop records um, you know back and play as well just by holding down the shift and hitting back and play it will do that for you you know it's absolutely fantastic quick navigation there um, I personally use move to selection a lot as you'll see here I've got move to selection in green and really a, you know self-explanatory there I can just move to selection and I can just move to my selection and I can just hit play anywhere that I want about my project and I use that quite often just to find specific parts of a song any point that I want to save what I've been doing in my project down here you have the option to hit save and there we go it just saves the session and that's great if I hit these two buttons here together that'll bring up my U control settings and that'll bring them up obviously on my on my display itself uh, so you can't see that right now but that's what it does and uh, moving on from there if I can close the U control settings on my screen I have the option here to bring up using these soft keys that are not lit at the moment. If I hit this, it corresponds with that kick. So there we go, show me that that's selected. Now, below if I hit soft keys, it will get rid of this transport and it will bring up selected soft keys there. Each one of these corresponds to each one of these soft keys here. So for example, we have do to selected over on the right hand side and then we have save and I could hit each of those by hitting that button there to save. For example, I can cancel by hitting that cancel there. I've got do to all. It's all right there in front of me and it's really easy to get to. Um, I can page up and down using these two keys here. And again, much like using the soft keys on the soft keys page, at any point I've lost where I am, I can hit home and I can go right back to that first page. Just scroll me down memory locations and then you can come all the way down to all of your user defined pages as well and that's great. As I said, at any point you get lost of where you are, you just hit home and you go right back to where you are. Right now I'll show you changing from mixer to channel view and show you some of the plugin control. Um, depending on what track you want to control, it's really, really easy again to pick uh, what track you want, even though you're not in mixer view. You can see your tracks along the top here. I've got from kick to drum room left over there on the right hand side. Uh, I can swipe left and right to view them all or again I can just go back to the banking and nudging that I showed you before and at any point I want to click on one of them I just do so on the screen here and it selects it down to the attention fader so that's really cool but going back to the kick that I had on I already have the UAD uh, vision API vision loaded I have A to H in view with the vision loaded on the first insert if I wanted access to ING I would click on it there on the screen, it would give me I and I, but I'm going back to vision, so I'm going to click there, I'm going to open up vision by tapping there, and there we go. There's the API vision loaded, and it's actually showing on my computer monitor as well. The cool thing about working with it this way is, with these four boxes down here, depending on what I want to control at the time, for example, if I want to just control the gate section, I would do so here, and I would just tap on gate, and it would give me all the controls for the gate, which is on that channel strip. I've then got access to any of the parameters using the eight rotary knobs, and they feel fantastic, just like the S3, really, really responsive, nice to use for long periods of time. At uh, any point you want to go back to your default parameter, you just click into the middle, and it does that for you as I said they feel really really good 
some channel strips and various plugins will have more features to them and you can access them usually by swiping left or right within this box here uh, so for example if you wanted to go to the compressor section you could hit on it there and then have full control of that if you just want control of your dynamic section of plug-in or channel strip then you can hit this dynamic pad up there and there's the dynamic control if you want control over the EQ of it you can hit the EQ there and again you've got full control over anything that you want within that session so it really is good that way um, the same goes for now I think I have a LA2A which is usually my go to on bass guitar so if I come along here and I click on bass guitar I've opened up my bass guitar insert there we go I'll hit on dynamic and there we go there's the compression ratio the threshold and the gain for the UAD LA2A and yeah again compress or limit threshold control the gain high pass frequency it's all there and to come out of that I can go to insert again and I can come right back out or I could just go to a completely different track and have full control over it again so really really intuitive um, somebody asked me recently how did I go about actually inserting a plug-in onto a track with the dock and I'll show you that right now as an example, if I want to load up a plugin on the first insert of my vocal track, I'm still on my kick track currently, so I need to find the vocal track. I can do that two ways. I can swipe right or left, depending where the vocal track is, using the iPad app, or I can use the bank keys on the Pro Tools dock. I do that, and then I find my vocal track, I tap it, that's the vocal track being selected and it's got full attention to the track and everything else on the dock. So from there, I would just hit configure, then I'd pick the insert, which is A. Then I've got the option for no insert, plug-in or I.O. I'm going to push in on plug-in because that's what I want to pick. And then I've got the option for all of my plugins. I'm going to navigate about here and I'm going to look for EOSIS and put on my Air EQ. Now I can see that EOSIS is over here. I tap on that and then EOSIS is available to me on the top left side. I'm going to tap on that to load the EOSIS. There's the action... Uh, there is the option for Air EQ. I'll click on that and it's loaded within Pro Tools. I go back to my inserts, I click on my Air EQ and there's my full control over it on that uh, track. So it really is quite easy to load a plug-in using the dock. I'm finding it quicker and quicker the more that I'm using the dock and it's really speeding up my workflow. It's fantastic to use. Um, talking a little bit about pan control, if I want to alter the pan of my vocal, all I would do is I hit this pan control here. That gives me the full pan control of left and right using that top left um, encoder. Doing that there. If I want to, just as an example, move to my gang vocal, I can pan that out left and right, or maybe pan that, I don't know, 20% uh, 20 to the, the left. And then the other gang vocal I've got, I'll pan that out 20% to the right. And to show you that I can control a stereo track with the panning, I also have a vocal pad sitting right there as well. And there we have it left and right and I can control them left and right for really how wide I want to make it. It really does feel great. Very very fast once you get used to it. Um, one other thing that I think I should touch on as well is that for S3 users the dock can be very good for using this fader here as an attention fader for the VCA master. And to show that I'd be best going back to my mixer view and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bank out I'm going to find my drums I'm going to select my drum track there that's my drum VCA master selected and that is basically controlling all of my tracks within that VCA as I move up and down as you would expect a, a VCA to do if I want to spill that out across the S3 all I have to do is double tap the, double tap the select key I double tap that and it spills them out across the S3 that still gives me full control over the VCA master here in focus or I can reach across to the S3 and I can control any of the faders on that um, to come back out of the VCA master mode I double tap on select and it takes me straight back out of it 
Um, thank you very much for watching. If anybody has any questions about the dock that they think I could maybe answer for them in a kind of uh, pre-sales kind of look at it, um, then don't hesitate to drop me a wee message or, you know, write in the comment box below. And if I can answer it, then I will. Take care. Thank you very much.